Grace and peace to all of you and welcome to Sleepy Hollow Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Sunday, September 19th. Wow, this is just gorgeous. And if I hadn't been out at Stinson Beach for four hours in the rain yesterday, I'm not sure I would have appreciated this as much. <laughs> this is wonderful. So welcome. So glad you are all here. Now let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Holy Spirit, come to us, kindle in us the fire of your love. Holy Spirit, come to us. Holy Spirit, come to us. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Please join me in this morning's call to worship you can find on the front page of your bulletin. We gather in the name of the God of justice. We gather in the spirit of love and compassion. God calls us to live in the light of God. Let us lift up our hearts to God. Now, please stand as you're able and let's all sing number 744, Arise, Your Light Has Come.
final verse again. Arise. Arise, your light has come. The mountains burst in song. Rise up like eagles on the wing. God's power will make us strong. You may be seated. Thank you. And that's a, a oldie but goodie and by a woman composer. This is one of the treasures of the wow. Presbyterian hymnal. Please join me in the unison prayer printed on the top of page two of your bulletin. Does everyone have a bulletin? Yes? Okay, good. Gracious God, help us to stretch ourselves each day to find new ways to be welcoming and kind. Free us from fear, anxiety, and self-seeking. Fill us with a thirst for justice and energize us to be persistent in seeking justice for all people. Now, please take a moment and listen for God's loving message for you today. If it's the voice of love, that's the voice of God. Amen. And now hear your assurance of grace. You know, I do that too. I listen for that voice of love. And what God was saying to me today was, don't worry, trust. I will not leave you. So I want you to all hear that too. God will never leave you. Don't worry, trust. That's what the assurance of grace means, that God assures us that no matter who we are and no matter where we are on our life path and no matter what is behind us, God loves us, God accepts us, God forgives us for every place we've fallen short. God welcomes us into the heart of God and the grace of God is ours. So believe this good news. You are loved. You are accepted. Amen. And now as people who are beloved of God, let us share the sign of God's peace with one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pass the peace. Those at home, you can keep passing the peace through chat. And everyone here, feel free to get up and move around, but respect people's space if they have a desire to social distance. Yes, peace be with you. Peace, be still, peace, be still, storm rages, peace, be still,
bringing more chair here let's put them more like th this way yeah the thank you riley helping move the chairs that is awesome okay anybody and dads are welcome to come up and bring olive and um otto into the circle if we i think flynn can you move over and make room for this dad who's coming with these two kids or else if it's how, how are your knees uh, <laughs> because you can sit on a grown-up chair behind them uh, we'll whatever yep that however we want everyone to be comfy so okay all right well this is a special day we're so happy you're all here so let's introduce ourselves because it's always helpful for people to remember each other's names so i'm bev yes hello how are you Otto? you are happy that's so awesome your brother's happy huh olive yeah okay so let's start with our teachers kelsey ava rowan Flynn, are you a teacher too? You could be. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Say your name. Julia, thanks for being here. And then Olive, right? Do you want to say your name? Don't worry, it's fine. And uh, what's your dad's name? JB, we welcome you. And Otto, right? Okay, good. I got it right. Okay, good. Otto's going to be baptized October 24th. So we're pretty excited about that. And what about you? What's your name? Finn. Rowan. Oh, he doesn't like being Riley right now. Well, all right. That's fine. I never really liked the name Bev, but I never could think of anything better. <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can work that out with your grown-ups and that's just fine um <clears throat> all right so today's a special day because ava is going to college on wednesday oh my gosh so yeah she's going to college on wednesday so we're gonna bless her for a send-off but before we do that we have a quick little message now whoops my card was upside down okay the oh good abigail come on up so happy to see you. We've got a special seat right here next to Julia. Yeah, see right here. We'd love for you to come on up. Um, so Abigail was at the beach cleanup yesterday and she's here right from her soccer. Is your shoulder okay? No, really? You want an ice pack? Okay, it's fine. Okay, good. I, I just wondered. Okay, now the Bible tells us over and over again that God is a God of love for all people, every single one of you, all children across the whole world. And God wants things to be fair and people to share. Okay. So the Bible says this again and again, and that's why our values here are respect, kindness, sharing, and planet care. And we try to do them every single day, you know? So, but you could ask, and people have asked me, a lot of teenagers have asked me and grownups too. Well, if God loves all people and God wants the world to be fair, why is it that the world isn't fair, right? Why is it that we have a garden here where we grow food to make sure that we can give food to people who wouldn't have enough food? They wouldn't have healthy food. Why do we have to do all that work, right? That's a very good question. If God is love, which God is, and if Jesus loves all children, which Jesus does, why didn't God and Jesus just wave a magic wand so that everybody would share perfectly all the time? Well, the Bible also tells us that it's actually our job to share and to work on convincing other people to share and to try to make sure that everybody's got enough. That's our job. God brings us the light to light us up and show us the way. And then we have to keep doing the job, right? And one way we keep doing it is we have friends who do it with us. Like we had a bunch of us at the beach yesterday, right, Abigail? It would not have been nearly as fun to go out to the beach. Just, well, we had some who were out there having wonderful solitary time, but it was great that we all met in one spot in the parking lot and kind of got each other energized to go clean up the beach. 
Now, cleaning up the beach is a good example because you have to do it over and over again. It's not something that you do it once and it's done forever, right? So that's why you really need friends and allies to do it with, and you need God's light. So we have a song about light. Alex is going to, Alex and Stephen, I think. Stephen? Yes, Alex and Stephen are going to bring the song about light to help us remember. helps you remember to look for it in other people and to make sure that everybody gets a fair chance, right? Now you have two stories for children's time today. This one is a favorite of my granddaughter, Grace. And I meant to welcome back. Grace is really, you're like Grace's aunt. Yes, my granddaughter, Grace's best friend's mom, Sarah Tanner, welcome back to the church. So nice of Sarah to come out here from Sausalito to sing. And uh, also um, this, I think Madeline likes this book too, your daughter, Herb, the Vegetarian Dragon. Now, <clears throat> I read this to Grace to see if it was approved by a five-year-old at the time. And she said the very beginning could be scary for three and under. So, if it, so the teachers have been instructed to give special attention to the little children at just the beginning of the book, they might need to close their eyes. But I mean, the illustrations are, well, yeah. Uh, no, there's a scary dragon. So, you know, if that's too scary, we make arrangements, right? But the idea of the book is that Herb, the vegetarian dragon, needed a friend. And so you'll find out who turns out to be his friend. And then we have another book too. Maybe, I don't know if we'll get to it, but you're gonna do some art about being an ally working together with people to make things fair. All right, Ava, please come forward. So Ava is a child of this church and um, it has been a great privilege and honor to see her grow up in this church, to talk to the children during children's time about her environmental leadership and her passion for planet care, one of our four values. She's um, been a children's program teacher for the last year and a half, which was hard during COVID and she really brought it. And now she's going to college. So actually, let me get that mic cover back and you can say a couple words. Um, yeah, so I'll be leaving this Wednesday to go to the University of Oregon. And <laughs> thank you. Um, but I'll miss all of you guys so much. This has been such a, a fun and um, such a blessing to be here for so long. So thank you guys. Let us put, oh, let us put a blessing on Ava. All right, let us pray. Holy one, Ava is your beloved and your spirit is in her shining brightly. Help her to feel your constant companionship and love and know that you, the healer, the companion, are with her always, every step of her life, so that she can just rest into peace and joy and know that this is an exciting new adventure for which she is well equipped. May she be blessed this day, this adventure, and always. Amen. And feel free to go with them. All right. So now, children, let's bless you. All right. Let's pray. Jesus loves all children. May all of these children remember that each day of their lives and feel that blessing and that love. Amen. All right, let's have some music. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, teachers, escort your children. Our Hebrew scripture this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 3, and chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. Please listen for God's word. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people's. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will, will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of to your dawn. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Amen. Got the sound of justice ringing in my ear. I got, got the sound of justice ringing in my ear. I got the sound of justice ringing in my ear. Glory, hallelujah, ringing in my ear. I got the day that all folk everywhere are free. I got the day that all Bring it in my ear, I got the sound of justice, bring it in my ear, glory, hallelujah, glory, 
Please join me in prayer. God, you are the light that lights our paths, that lights our heart, that energizes our lives, that shows us the way. Your light lives in us. Help us to hear something fresh today that really turns up our wattage and gives us a lot of energy to shine brightly into this world. Amen. Our gospel reading today is a parable you've heard a lot, a lot here. <laughs> and I heard something brand new this week in this parable. And I just was so excited. I had to share it with you. So listen for God's word. Listen for a fresh word in this familiar parable from Luke 18, verses 1 through 8, the parable of the widow and the unjust judge. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. Jesus said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, the judge refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to God's chosen ones who cry to God day and night? Will God delay long in helping? I tell you, God will quickly grant justice. And yet when the son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? Amen. So good morning again. And yes, yesterday was the international, the world coastal cleanup day. And uh, this worldwide uh, call for action to take care of our coasts, our beaches, our waves, our surf, really uh, called us to action here. So we put out the call as a church and I'm so happy that several families answered that call. Several, yes, thank you every single one of you for coming out. Um, now, when Stinson Beach heard I was coming, Stinson Beach decided to send the fog and the rain because we were out at Stinson Beach, a few houses off the beach for uh, my vacation in August for our we do granddaughter camp. Uh, of course, it was, had to be canceled for COVID, but then this year we were back at it doing our granddaughter camp. And part of it was at Stinson Beach and we never saw the sun. So I, I tried to say to myself, well, that's good. We didn't have to use up so much sun cream and worry about sunburn on the girls. But, <laughs> but so, you know, Bridget Clark, our mission elder and I uh, got in her car with our masks and we were loaded up. Oh my gosh. She had brought all the equipment for beach cleaning, all these little pickers and gloves and, you know, the whole thing that you do for beach cleaning and also food. Cause we were hoping to have a picnic afterwards. And I had just grabbed pretty much every unopened box of groceries in my house and pantry to, you know, in case anybody was hungry. And so we had all this stuff in her car and we get out there. And of course, the closer we got to the beach, the more it was raining. So we're not complaining about rain, okay, right? It was wonderful. But this is the thing. We met up with our, our partner in mission, Scott, who is uh, the Surf Rider, which is a worldwide foundation. It started with surfers, as the name would imply, and is a worldwide foundation dedicated to, let me get their beautiful mission statement. statement. Um, raising consciousness for accessible actions people can integrate into their lives to promote healthy beaches on a daily basis. That's a pretty good mission statement, right? Surf riders, practical. They know that you don't clean up the beach once and you're done. Beaches are clean forever. No, like so many other things about justice, planet care, bringing God's kingdom to fruition here on earth. It's not a once and done. I mean, we see now voting rights, reproductive rights. It's not like you get it and then it's, it's done and you can just rest on your laurels. No, justice is something that we just keep 
working on and planet care earth justice the same so to get in that mindset Surfrider has this wonderful realistic mission statement that's about learning all the little ways that are accessible like everybody can do something that we can actually put in our lives and do every day like using less plastic that's a big one so Scott used to be the head lifeguard at Stinson Beach. Let me simply say he's not in that shape now at age 71, but he has great stories. And so I never thought I could be this happy standing, standing in the parking lot at Stinson Beach with the ocean just a tantalizing distance away. And, you know, I stood there for two hours with him under our earth flag, just to make sure that anybody who came from the church, we would get all equipped and out to the beach. And we were doing that, sending people out in teams and families. And it was so enjoyable. I, I have to tell you, I was astonished. I mean, I went with the right attitude because I recognized that beach cleanup is not a once and done endeavor. It's a, you just keep doing it a little bit whenever you possibly can work it in, you know? And also Scott is dedicated to beach uh, health and preservation his whole life. And he has a lot of interesting stories about Stinson Beach and adventures. And we shared stories. I told him how we grow food here at the church. And that too is not a once and done justice thing, right? We grow food every year and we feed the hungry every year. And we're not getting everybody, but we're getting some people because of all of you. So this is the reality of justice work. And I think we can get downtrodden, but I saw something new in that passage that really helped boost me, which is that, you know, usually we read that passage, that gospel passage that, you know, the, un, the widow has got this uh, amazing tenacity and persistence. And there's this judge and she just has to just, you know, go back again and again and again. And, it, and it's supposed to boost our persistence in prayer and in life and help us to not give up and not quit because there's some things that are really worth working for. But the thing I saw that was new to me in this era where we're talking a lot about systemic injustice is that that's what Jesus is talking about here too. This judge is not God. Oh, absolutely not. It's very clear in the parable that this judge is unjust to the core. This judge does not have any reverence for God or principle. This judge doesn't care about people. In other words, this is not a good judge, right? But guess what? We have learned in our country and every generation has to seem to learn this anew. There's a lot of people in positions of authority that don't. They don't have higher principles and they don't seem to have a lot of empathy and compassion. And that's systemic injustice in the, you know, that's how it perpetuates because we have these systems and we have people enforcing these systems that really are not caring about the impact of the system on people who are suffering. So that's an, an overarching message of this gospel. Jesus who, who came and preached his first sermon from the, uh, the verses in Isaiah that Carolyn read so beautifully, those verses, right? It's the, it's the our call is to work for freedom from oppression for those who are oppressed, captive, prisoners. That's our calling to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn. This is something that we work into our life to do every day, every way that we can. And it makes a purposeful life. It makes a meaningful life. We make our meaning by connecting with people by growing our empathy and deepening our connection, and then by making allyships to work for justice so we don't get worn out. So uh, yesterday was the one-year anniversary of the death of um, Associate Justice on the Supreme Court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, there's a lot of good quotes from Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I'm just gonna indulge myself with one of my personal favorites, which is she said that to stay married for a long time like she did, you have to be deaf sometimes. <laughs> I thought that's good, but uh, she never stopped fighting for justice, never. She said that the judges on the Supreme Court when she got there in 1993 really didn't think there was such a thing as sex discrimination. They were just completely blind to it right? They had one woman on the court out of nine spots, Sandra Day O'Connor, and they're like, 
sure, fine, eight to one. That's not discrimination. You know, women have got it good, right? So she said that it really wasn't until, you know, the big first feminist wave in the 1970s, with no disrespect for the suffragettes, I don't want to actually say the 70s was the first, but uh, they started thinking that maybe the language in the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution, the Equal Protection Clause, that the any person might actually include women. That was like light bulbs off, light, oh, whoa, any person means women too, not just any male person. So she got to the Supreme Court feeling she had a lot of educating to do. She wrote a lot of dissents, but she didn't get downtrodden because even though she wasn't in the majority and she was writing dissents, she was writing them for the future because she realized that, I'll quote her, well, first, I would like to be remembered as someone who used whatever talent I had to do my work to the very best of my ability. You know, she used what she had to the best of her ability. And then real change, enduring change happens one step at a time. Fight for the things you care about, but don't turn people off. Make allies so you'll have friends fighting with you. So those are good words to remember in this time. Um, I'll also quote from uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's youngest child, Reverend Dr. Bernice King, who is CEO of the Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change, which was founded by her mother, Coretta Scott King. And she wrote this week, I'm hopeful. Hope is not naivete. Hope is being honest about where we are but believing there is better and participating in the work for better. And she quotes the prophet Isaiah and says that both Isaiah and Jesus compel us to live the Christian love ethic every day, every way we can. Now, not everybody has a nonprofit uh, organization to run or, you know, is the Supreme Court justice, but everybody's got something. And, uh, and I, I wonder how many of you might have seen the art exhibit that has been installed just this week on the National Mall around the Washington Monument. Did any of you see any coverage of that? Well, I really commend to you that you go online and look it up. It's called In America Remember by Suzanne Brennan Furstenberg who is an artist uh, who I have never heard of uh, until this time, but she's what happened with Suzanne Brennan Furstenberg is she felt that at the beginning of COVID, some remarks were made as though it was okay for a lot of people to die from coronavirus, that they were just sort of necessary casualties. And she became so angry at this lack of compassion and this loss of a collective sense of human dignity that she tried to figure out a way to express it in art so that people weren't just numbers. They weren't just like a number in a data spreadsheet. They were remembered as people. So she did a smaller installation 400,000 deaths ago, but this week she put up with the assistance of the National Park Service, 670,000 white flags on the north side of the Washington Monument on the National Mall one for each person. And she's continuing to add, and the number continues to grow. And each person, each loved one of a lost COVID uh, person is encouraged to come and write a message on the flag and send them in electronically so that they can, each flag can have a love message on it. So what she, what she said is, we have to find the way, she, she did not ever think of herself as an artist. Then she said she took some art classes. She found out there was some art in her. I have to say, I think there's some art in all of us, you know, and she used that art in her to express her feelings, to make this beautiful exhibit. And when you see it, not just, don't look at just the static pictures, but look at some of the video that shows what happens when these 670,000 flags are moving in the wind. They're little, but it's stunning. It's gorgeous. And thinking of all those love messages, it's powerful. So her, her remark on this, her conclusion is that 
it is a physical manifestation of empathy. God calls us to bind up the brokenhearted, as Carolyn read, to comfort those who mourn. Each day of our life, there is something that we can do that God has equipped us to do to be able to be those comforters, to be those lovers, to be those people who are actually manifesting empathy. That is our calling. God's light is shining in us so that we can do it. May it be so. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, I do need to announce to you that Dave Bartriff died on Thursday. He was at home. He was with his wife of 62 years, Maria, and his daughter, Emiko. And uh, I've spent a lot of time with the family this week. We did a service of committal Friday with just the immediate family. And I think we will have a service here at church, so I'll, I'll let you know. So we want to pray for the Bartriff family. Um, I, I would say they're severely bereaved. So we do want to pray for them. And we still have you know, um, praying for the Steiner family on the loss of Bobby, and of course, praying for the Beach family on the loss of Dave. So um, we went through a long time without a loss in the congregation. And now th this does feel like a lot. So let's just, you know, realize there's a lot of opportunity for us here to comfort those who mourn, because we have three families in mourning. All right, let us pray. Holy One, we look to you for where you want us to be and how you want us to be. Create in us a clean heart so that we can bring to you and to this, your church and your world, your kingdom, the purest of intentions, the openness of hearts. Help us to be brave, to care, to expand our circle of concern, to be able to meet people where we find them, even when sometimes they're in having a hard time. Fill us up with your energy. Help us to persist in justice seeking. Help us to know that we are building together a better world for everybody's children. Be with the Bartra family as we know you are so that they can really feel it, that Dave is resting in peace with you and the greatest of all peace. Help all those in our church that are suffering with every kind of difficulty. May they rest in the knowledge that Jesus is the healer and the Holy Spirit will never leave us alone. God in your grace.
Um, so let us all be praying with Millie's family. Her daughter, Linda's daughter, Nikki's house burned last Sunday and they all got out, right, Millie? So everybody got out, but it was uh, pretty terrifying. And we puts us in close empathy and solidarity with all those who have lost their homes and who uh, are in that evacuated or uh, really like homeless state relying on the kindness of, of their families and others. So we're with Nikki and, and the whole family and with Millie, who's had quite a lot going on. God in your grace. Let's lift up prayers of healing and love for Nancy Elberg's sister, Andrea, and her dear husband, Greg. God in your grace. Did you say uh, Christopher's girlfriend, Karina, lost her father-in-law, stepfather, lost her stepfather. So prayers for Carolyn's son, Christopher's girlfriend, Karina, who lost her stepfather to COVID. And to all those who had a loss to COVID this week, indeed. Oh, may God comfort them. God in your grace. All right, let's all sing the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Um, as we come to the invitation and dedication for the offering, I just want to say thank you all for your financial support and all your time. It's making the church vibrant, and we're we're just here. We all are. This is just so wonderful. So, um, I I I do you have the slide up, or should I? <laughs> Bao is doing everything today because Janelle's away. So let's say a thank you to Bao. I mean, everything with live stream and Zoom. Yes, Corin behind him, our worship elder, does everything that she does. 
So we have a team of really dedicated volunteers who are making church happen and we can always use help. And the same with the garden and the farm stand. We just need, we need a lot of help. Church is an all in hands on endeavor, but thank you so much for everything you're doing. Um, it's easy and works well for the church. If you want to give through Venmo or PayPal, those of you online, those of you here, and uh, those of you who are sending in checks or just putting anything in the basket or in the black box, we really appreciate it. So we, we just, we are completely self-supporting and we need all your help. So thank you. So let's dedicate the offering. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to be your body in the world. Help us to answer your call and to dedicate our very faithful gifts to the best that we can do for the most people. Amen. I hear the pitter-patter of little feet out there, so that's great. So Sarah Tanner has a beautiful offertory for us. Thank you. That was beautiful. 
As we come to our announcements, uh, I want to say first that we have music with Alex for the teens or all ages today. Pam Selvig's joining in, I hope. And uh, I see that we've got, uh, we had a great group last week and we're going to bring the drums down and have some fun. So music for all ages with Alex today. Um, also, I'll be giving, uh, uh, encouraging those of you who haven't checked on the progress of the construction to come upstairs, but let's view it from inside. Uh, I, I, we can't walk, with the, all the contractor folk were warning me, we can't be walking outside on the upper yard right now because it's all laid out for the concrete pour on Tuesday and there's just cables and it's, right Bill, it would be unsafe to have people out, yes, he's agreeing, walking amongst the cables. So just feel free to go upstairs though with your mask on and go in the sanctuary and, and enjoy the new look of the sanctuary and what's happening outside and you get to see the before and after with the concrete pour, because Tuesday is the big day. Any other announcements? Farm table? Yeah. Oh, good. All right, so yes, we didn't have the farm stand yesterday, but apparently the garden rebounded and we've got it inside and we might have Saturday and Sunday next week. We'll have to see what, what the garden provides. Okay, is that it on the announcements? All right, then let's, uh, can we uh, stand and sing our final hymn, Together We Serve, which I need to tell you was composed, is in the Presbyterian hymnal. It was composed for our uh, sister church across town, First Presbyterian San Anselmo. This is their hymn, and it's it made it into the Presbyterian hymnal, which is a stiff competition. So it was so we're singing in solidarity with the Presbyterians across town. Say thank you to Linda Peltzman. Where'd she go? Linda, uh, did the, Linda did the flowers today, right? Yes. So the bulletin had a mistake and it said Merle, but Linda did the flowers. So Linda was wearing so many hats today. Fellowship flowers and choir. So hand for Linda. Yeah. Woohoo! Three hats. I hope she can hear us. All right. So uh, receive your charge and benediction. As you go out from here. 
Think of yourself as a three-way light bulb. Do they even have those anymore? Now with no LED lights, that's like an antique thing. Okay, well, for those old enough to remember what a three-way light bulb was, are you guys okay? Hello, I'm giving the charge and benediction. Uh, so, um, so imagine yourself for those old enough to remember as a three-way light bulb and turn up, okay? <laughs> Walk through life each day very intentionally turning yourself up to that biggest wattage and letting God's light shine through you. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, I was going to say light, the light and love of God and the constant companionship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and forever, each one this day and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.